Instead of accepting the government of God, Adam rejected the government of God just as the angels had done. In effect, and putting it in a modern language, in effect, Adam said to God, God, I want you to get your nose out of my affairs. I don't know what you're trying to get out of me, but I don't want you to have anything to do with me. I will think myself. I'll decide myself what is right, what is good, and what is evil. I will think my own way through. I will create my own knowledge. And I reject you as my God. I reject you as my ruler. The World Tomorrow. The Worldwide Church of God presents The World Tomorrow with Herbert W. Armstrong. The real beginning of the account of Jesus, and it's the real beginning of uh, the entire history and prehistory of the universe, is not in the first chapter of Genesis, I've said before on these programs, but in the New Testament, in John 1, verse 1. Now, John is the fourth of these uh, four gospel books in the beginning of the New Testament. In the beginning was the Word. Now that is a personage called the Word. It comes uh, from the Greek word logos, and it means spokesman. It means the personage who was the spokesman. And the Word was with God. Now God is another personage. And the two personages, the Word and God, were there together. And the Word was God. In other words, the Word also was God, but a different person. And they're both God. The book of John, second verse, the same was in the beginning with God. That is, this personage called the Word. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now I would like you to notice this. At that time, there was no physical matter. There was no universe. Everything was just empty space, endless space, no end of it at all, but there was nothing there, nothing but space, no matter of any kind. And yet, this being called the Word later created space because it says that Elohim in Genesis 1-1, which means the Father and the one that became the Son, Jesus Christ, created the heavens and the earth. And as I say in the third chapter of Ephesians, uh, you will read that uh, God created all things by and through Jesus Christ. Now, he's the spokesman, but he used the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. Back in that prehistoric time of antiquity, there was two great personages, one called God, the other called the Word, but they were both God. They together formed God like a family. They had supreme minds, and they began to think. And taking what we have in the various parts of the Bible, and doing a little thinking along with it, and knowing that man was made in the image of God, and man was given a mind a great deal like the mind of God, only of course very much inferior to God's mind, I think that if we can just put ourselves back in the place of this God and this uh, uh, word, or Elohim, as it is in the Hebrew language that Moses used, we can see that they began to think what to do. They thought, they designed, they planned before they did it. And the first thing that they decided to create was angels. Now let me explain that God and the Word, these two great personages, were composed of spirit. But there was no physical matter anywhere. But they composed then angels. They created angels out of spirit, and angels became immortal spirits. 
They have eternal life, and they can never die. So the first thing they created was angels. Then after that, they created the material universe, and as God explained to Job in the 38th chapter of Job, who had just completed building the greatest building on the face of the earth in his day, that uh, he had been like an employed architect and builder by the Pharaoh of Egypt. He was not the Pharaoh, but the Pharaoh had employed him to build the Great Pyramid in Egypt, a tremendously important building. God said to him, where were you, Job, when I laid the foundations of the earth? When all the angels shouted for joy, and the morning stars, or angels, were singing and shouting for joy at the earth. It was so beautiful when God first created it. Now, that's long, long before any man was ever created on the earth, or at least we think it was very long. We don't know how long it was. It might have been millions or billions of years. It might have been a very few years. Uh, that, I think, is all conjecture because in the Bible, you will find the things that are revealed, and they're revealed in the Bible, belong to us. But uh, the other things not revealed, the hidden things, belong to God, and we're not going to find out. There are some things that science just simply does not know and cannot find out. And it's about time we realize that, that man is not so great as he seems to think he is. And yet man's potential is millions of times greater than man realizes it is. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message. Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I want it. Some little kids sure spend a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. The kids are grown now, and hmm, Sandy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm. Is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question, why were you born? To request your free copy, dial direct 800-423-4444. That's 800 800- Four two three four 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 four. Well, already we begin to see how great this super personage called the Word really was that uh, uh, later became born as Jesus Christ. Now, angels inhabited this earth. This earth was made as their abode, and they were put on this earth for a great person, purpose, I should say, and uh, the government of God was put over them to keep them all together, to keep them pulling together, to keep them working together, and to uh, uh, increase their very great accomplishment. Now, God placed a king on the throne of the earth. His name was Lucifer. He was a super archangel. He is the one that was the uh, supreme masterpiece of God's creative power, and God could create no greater. But God could not put with, within him at the time of creation holy, righteous, and spiritual character. Character is something that must be developed, and with the knowledge, the consent, and the desire, and with the decision of the one in whom that character is uh, instilled. The character actually comes from God, but God cannot just put it there. It wouldn't be character if he did. That would make us like a machine. We'd have no mind of our own. God had given these angels the directive of the right way, but they had to make their own decision. And this great Lucifer, who was put on as the king, the archangel, over them, led them into a rebellion. Now, the law that was the foundation of the government of God was simply of the great spiritual law that we summarize with the one word, love, L-O-V-E. Now, love is an outgoing thing. First, love toward God. 
in worship, in reverence, and in obedience, and in uh, reliance and faith. But love toward neighbor comes in the way of an outgoing concern for the good and the welfare of your neighbor, of helping, of sharing, of assisting, of serving, and that sort of thing. But this great archangel put on a throne on this earth, ruling over those angels, decided on the opposite course. Instead of submission to God, he chose the way of vanity to exalt himself. He says, I will ascend, I'm going to knock God off his throne, and I'm going to rule everything. I'm going to make myself God. So he took whatever time it was necessary to swing his angels into that mode of thinking and rebellion until they joined with him in a swift flight up to the throne of God from this earth to try to knock God off the throne, but they were cast down, and it was a third of all of the angels. After that rebellion, the government of God no longer existed on this earth. Now, that's the important thing I want you to know now. But the king over the angels, the former Lucifer, as his name had been, and Lucifer means a bringer of light, a, a, a shining star of the dawn is another uh, definition of it, and he now became uh, the, the bringer of darkness instead of light. He now became an enemy, and his name was changed to Satan, which means adversary or uh, enemy or competitor. Now, after that, great destruction came to the earth as a result of this rebellion of the angels. You read of that back in Genesis 1 and verse 2. The earth had become chaotic in confusion, waste and empty, and decayed. And then, as you read in the 104th Psalm, 30th verse, Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, that is, the things that he creates are created, but first he sends his spirit as the, as I explained previously now, the power that does the making, uh, instead of electricity and machinery. In, in God's case, it's the Holy Spirit of God. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, and they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. He renewed the face of the earth. It had been brought to decay. It had been deteriorated by angels that were supposed to improve it, to build it up, to make it more beautiful. Instead, they tore it down, and great destruction had come. So in the first chapter of Genesis in your Bible, you read of the six days that God used in renewing the face of the earth. That was not the original creation. Most people have thought it was. But if you have all of the Bible and put it all together, you begin to see other parts of the Bible fill in what is not there. Now, God renewed the face of the earth for man. Now God purposed to make man after his own image. In other words, God had decided to create or to reproduce himself. And man ultimately has the great potential of being made into God, but we have to build that character in this life uh, now before we can ever be made into an immortal character. And uh, of course that means that ultimately uh, those who, who do and who do make the right decision will be changed from material substance into uh, spirit. And spirit is so much greater and so much more powerful than simple matter. Now the first man was named Adam, and Christ is often called the second Adam, and uh, because there is a, uh, a system of duality throughout the Bible and in all the things that God does. There was the Old and the New Testament. Uh, there was the uh, nation, nation of Israel, which was a physical nation in this world. There's to be the kingdom of God, which will be uh, spirit-born. And... Uh, Anyway, the first man was Adam, but Adam now had to make a choice. Adam had the opportunity to turn away from the way that this Lucifer, now called Satan, had gone. 
He had the opportunity to just receive the Spirit of God, and it was there in that symbolic tree of the tree of life. All he had to do was take it. He didn't have to repent of anything. He had done nothing wrong. But he had to make a decision. And if he went that way, it meant obeying the laws of God. He would have become the king in the place of this Satan, who was the former Lucifer. He would have ruled over his own progeny, uh, and all human beings have come from him and his wife Eve. Well, uh, God informed him, just as he had the angels in the first place. God instructed him thoroughly. God said, but you have to make your own decision. I'll tell you the right way. I hope you'll choose that way, but you must choose. I will not do it for you. Then God allowed Satan to get to him, and Satan got to him through his wife. And Satan ridiculed what God had said. He said, uh, God knows better. He says, you're not going to die because uh, if you just take uh, this other tree, uh, take to yourself the knowledge of what is good and evil, instead of letting God tell you what is good or what is evil, uh, you'll be God yourself, and you won't die. And uh, God has been misrepresenting. Uh, Satan tried to tell him, and, uh, or he told Eve, and she believed it. She was deceived. But Adam was not deceived, and when she took to herself the knowledge of good and evil, Adam took it with her and rejected the way of God. Now, what actually happened is this. Instead of accepting the government of God, Adam rejected the government of God just as the angels had done. In effect, and putting it in a modern language, in fact, Adam said to God, God, I want you to get your nose out of my affairs. I don't know what you're trying to get out of me, but I don't want you to have anything to do with me. I will think myself. I'll decide myself what is right, what is good, and what is evil. I will think my own way through. I will create my own knowledge. And I reject you as my God. I reject you as my ruler and my king. I will not uh, submit to your rule. And then uh, God said to Adam, in effect, and I'm giving it to you in modern language, paraphrasing it in my own language, God said to him, okay, you have made the decision. The decision was yours to make, not mine. You have said you don't want me in your affairs. You uh, don't want me to reveal any knowledge to you. You don't want me to be your God. You don't want me to be your ruler. Now, you have made the decision, I sentence you to 6,000 years, you and your children after you, that will form the whole world. Billions of people will come from you, and I sentence you and all your family, the human race, to 6,000 years of being cut off from me. You will be cut off from me as much as if there was an iron wall about uh, 500,000 miles thick between uh, the people on the earth and God. And they couldn't get through that great wall. They couldn't pierce through it. They couldn't see. They couldn't know about God. But God said, I will reserve to myself certain ones that I shall call, and I will want to do something for me. I will have something for them to do. And I reserve the right to call certain ones out of uh, this kingdom as you have sold out to Satan, who will still continue to rule for that uh, 6,000 years. And he is still ruling today, by the way. I will call those that I want. Now, among others, God uh, did call Abraham. Later, he called Moses. And Moses led descendants of Abraham 430 years after Abraham there were some, uh, well, two and a half to three and a half or four million of them. And uh, God uh, had Moses lead them out of e Egyptian slavery, because by that time they were slaves in Egypt. And God led them out by miracles. And God made a proposition to them that they could become his nation. Now, that uh, contract or agreement that they made with God at that time, and the people consented to it. God didn't force it on them. He let them make their own decision. 
and they decided they would become God's kingdom. They said they would obey God, and they would obey his government. The only promise he gave them, however, was that they would become the greatest nation on earth. They would become the head and not the tail. They would become the wealthiest, the most prosperous, and they would have uh, the highest standard of living and the greater uh, physical luxuries, but all material and physical. He didn't give them what is today called salvation or uh, the promise of eternal life. Uh, he did give that to Moses. He did give that to those that God had specially called to be his prophets, to whom he communicated and sent as messengers to carry the word of God to this nation Israel. But outside of Israel, the other nations were cut off from God. You go back in the history of ancient China, of Japan, of the other nations of uh, Asia and Southeastern Asia, of uh, those in Africa, and they have never known anything of God. They have their own religions. They don't know anything about God. They never did. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message. <laughs> The richest, most powerful group of nations on earth, the United States and British Commonwealth, are part of one of the most mysterious puzzles of all time. The prophecies of the Bible mention such small nations as Libya, Syria, and Ethiopia, but they seem to omit all reference to our peoples. How could such important nations be left out of inspired prophecy? This mysterious puzzle is unraveled in the full-length book, The United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy. This book reveals the true identity of our peoples from the pages of your Bible. And yet it goes beyond past history and shows you what to expect in the future. For your free copy of the United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy, call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. Now let me explain one thing right here. Man made the choice, but God was responsible when God says, I'm going to cut you off from me, because that's what man had chosen that he wanted. But if God cut them off, that means they did not have the knowledge of God, that they did not have the knowledge of salvation and eternal life, and that eternal life was never offered to them. Now that makes God the responsible party. I tell you, years ago, in the early years of Ambassador College, who uh, one of our students, as he was at that time, later became Dr. Herman L. Hay, wrote an article that uh, was one of the first articles ever published in the plain truth that I didn't write myself, and uh, it was uh, headed, I Hold God Responsible. Now, most people thought he was accusing God. Oh, no. God was the responsible party. Well, God wasn't guilty of anything. Man is the guilty party. But God is responsible. What I mean is this. Those that God has not specially called, those that God has not called and opened their mind to the truth, have not been called. Therefore, they are not lost. There is an idea today that's the greatest mistake made in the Christian world that everybody must get, quote, saved, unquote. And uh, I think that different denominations and different churches have different uh, uh, ideas of what that means. Some think it means going to heaven, others think it means giving immortal life and all that sort of thing. But nevertheless, uh, uh, those cut off from God have no knowledge of that. So God is responsible for that fact. And the result is they are not saved, they are not lost. Now God not only gave the Sabbath to man as a sign between him and man, he gave annual Sabbaths and holy days to his people. And of all things, that is the one thing <laughs> that has been ridiculed and rejected almost more than anything I know. And yet, in that very thing, the annual festivals that God gave his people, Israel, was the uh, outline of the master plan of God of what he's doing. And it shows that those being called now are just a few, one out of thousands, or one out of 
hundreds of thousands. That's all. Hardly more than one out of a million. And the others are blinded. The others have not heard the truth. And the others not being responsible. God is responsible for that situation. And it shows that over a thousand years from now into the future, there is going to be a great resurrection of billions of people. And they will be brought back in the human flesh just like they were. You read of it in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. You read of it in the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation. And then God is going to open their eyes and their minds. And then they're going to look back and see the 6,000 years of man going his own way, man going the way of Satan, man in rebellion against God and God's government, man forming his own governments. And I didn't quite complete what I was starting to say a minute ago. God said to Adam, not only am I going to cut you off from me and all knowledge, but I sentence you to 6,000 years of forming your own governments. And that's what we have. And look at the wars. There have been 133 wars since World War II. 133 wars between nations since 1945. And there have been wars. God said, form your own governments. That's what men have done. And their governments are only man-made and they're not lasting. And they're being overthrown. The governments are, uh, and the thrones of these governments are being overthrown at the rate of one a month and have been for the last three or four years. And let me say right here that the highest educated men in this world are uh, men who have been trained in their minds but it's 100% physical, carnal, uh, materialized information. They know only what can be seen through the eye, heard through the ear, smelled through the nose, tasted in the mouth, or known by feeling and touch. That's all. Now, you can't see spirit. You can't hear spirit. You can't smell, taste, or feel it. So there's no way that without a revelation from God that you can come to know the things of God. And that's why all these religions are so absolutely ridiculous when you come to know the truth. Men have been cut off from God. Well, I've said all of this before, but I want to bring this as background before I uh, proceed on. Now, um, God had... Uh, simply sentenced the world to that for 6,000 years. But let me say that that 6,000 years is just almost completed now. We're in the very last generation of it. And that's why God has called this church to carry his message out that the government of God is soon going to be restored on this earth. For the free literature offered on this program, write Herbert W. Armstrong, Pasadena, California, 91123. In Canada, Box 44, Vancouver, B.C. Or in the continental United States, you may call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. In California, dial direct 213-577-5225. The preceding program and all literature were produced by the Worldwide Church of God.